we have and you can see he's just giving us a little look through the foliage there so he's just woken up a little bit and is starting to groom now hopefully that will mean that he is going to start thinking about waking up you can see he's itching and where he's scratching at the moment is actually a, a big concentration of ticks so it's right behind his shoulder blades difficult to see now that he's laid down but on his shoulder blades there where he can't reach with his tongue he's got a grouping of ticks that have deposited themselves in amongst that fur and that's why he's itching so much and trying to use his claws to scratch and you can see one or two of the ticks there those big bulging gray balls uh, those ticks have penetrated in and those are massive if you think about the size of a spot on a leopard and you see the size of those ticks there you can imagine how big they are and they are absolutely saturated to the brim with blood so they're having a good feed and like I say it's because he actually can't get to that area so the rest of his coat is in great condition and there's no ticks anywhere where he can actually get his tongue um, and get the hooked um, muscle to be able to hook into those ticks and then pull them out also with his claws he can scratch them out and unfortunately he just can't reach between his shoulder blades so it's quite common to see that and at the moment the summer months the ticks are incredible they are everywhere at the moment and so for him having ticks between the shoulder blades is just part of summer living so holly yes leopards will take very long to groom themselves much like domestic cats it's a similar sort of thing they try and keep themselves as clean as possible so often what you'll find is if this leopard has moved around during the early hours of this morning and has now decided this is where he wants to sleep He'll then lie down and he'll start the grooming process and he'll pretty much groom his back legs along his body, front legs and try and get rid of all the parasites he's picked up while he's been walking around. Also he tries to get rid of all the loose fur that's been disrupted while he's been walking and just generally tries to get that coat into a good condition. You'll find then that they'll sleep and once they decide it's time to wake up they'll go through that whole grooming process again much like a domestic cat would do it's the same similar kind of thing and and the reason why they do it when they wake up again is because while they've been lying as i was saying to you lots of ticks in the grass at the moment and there'll be fleas and all kinds of things and they will have been able to crawl onto him while he's been sleeping and so when he wakes up he just gets rid of all of those parasites that haven't latched on yet and keeps that coat in good condition in preparation for when he starts to walk again and does his territorial patrols or hunting or anything like that so yes they do groom a lot and they have to particularly in the summer months with all these parasites around if they don't groom they're going to get into a situation where they're going to end up with far too many parasites and they're going to then potentially be ill um, too many tick bites can cause a staphylococcus infection in humans and I would imagine it would be very similar in animals that eventually the, the amount of poison being flushed through or bacteria flushed through the ticks mouth parts into a leopard if there was too many of them would definitely cause him to get quite ill and the problem with something like a leopard is if it does get ill from let's say too many ticks on it then it starts to get weaker and when it gets weaker it then becomes really difficult for it to hunt so a leopard can't afford to get into that condition and that's why they groom themselves so much now it sounds like there is a car that's coming along so I wonder if he's not going to wake up again so and it was yellow you would like to know how male leopards establish territory and breeding rights well and what will happen is when this young male leaves his mom he then becomes nomadic and he will then move around and become this nomadic male for a few years until he gets bulky and strong once he's bulky and strong he will then um, start looking for an area where he sees an older male or perhaps there's no male that's actively patrolling that area and he'll then start to scent mark and what he does is he scent marks and he vocalizes you know in a way to tell other leopards that this is my area now this is where I'm deciding to set up and where I'm going to make my home and so what he's trying to do is use a chemical and an audio um, display so that he actually doesn't have to fight because that's a last resort for them they don't want to fight with one another because they can risk serious injury so they would rather call and, and, and leave these chemical scents and what they do is they then go 
around and they push as far as they can until they meet resistance from another male that is of similar size and age and that will be able to keep them at bay. And that's how the territory is then set up. And then with mating, you'll find a situation with mating that um, there will be females that will be within his territory and generally males will have slightly larger territories than females and so they will try and encompass um, as many females as possible and you'll find that even some females will travel out of their territory into a neighboring male's territory just to be able to mate with them and so that's how they get their mating rights and generally then what will happen is once the mating commences the female and, and the male mating make a lot of noise and if there's any other males in that area they will hear that and they'll come in and then there'll be this territorial dispute and it will then end up with the case of the strongest fittest male will take over and he'll be the one that will mate and is normally the successful mate for that female. Now he's gotten a little bit upset because a car came barreling down the road and like I say we're on a main road and I think it disturbed him a little bit so that's why he's got his head up and he's looking over his shoulder now. What we're going to do is just sit quietly and not make too much noise. So Rachel, you're asking about these ticks and you want to know if these are the pepper ticks that have been plaguing Steph and myself and Jamie and James and Brent who have been on the bushwalks and whether or not that's them and that they've latched on and now become huge. Well, it is basically that. Um, pepper ticks are a certain species of ticks and it's the larval phase of the, stick, of the tick. So it's when it's first developed and then from there it will start to grow and get bigger. Um, and depending on the species, it will either go through a one-stage, two-stage, or three-stage life cycle. If it's a three-stage life cycle, like this bond tick that we see on this leopard, then it will have already dropped off another host um, twice before getting onto Tingana. So yeah, they will already be quite big when they get onto him, and then they're going to feed massively um, and swell out. And now, if you take that tick off for a while, you'll find that... Sorry guys, just got to get through this little monkey orange thicket. And isn't that spectacular? A bit of patience has paid off for us. He's now going to amble down the road. Um, so yeah, I mean these bond ticks are, are quite big already when they latch onto him. Isn't that spectacular? Oh, serious itch on that julep. And like I was saying, you can see he's in great condition and his belly is sing. Oh, that is my favorite sound, I just love it. So what he's doing there, and that goes back to our territorial discussion, is that he's voicing that this is my area, this is where I'm dominant, and don't come anywhere near here if you're another male. And he might even be just doing that to us, to show us that this is his territory, and that he's saying, this is my area, you know, I've been sleeping, but this is me calling and making a show for you. And you'll see that he'll probably go and he'll mark his territory as we go. So any sort of landmark that we come across, like a tree that's overhanging the road, you'll find he'll go up there and he'll push his face into the tree and use his scent glands to mark there and then lift his tail and spray this urine. But isn't that the most beautiful sight? This large cat just ambling down the road in front of us without a care in the world. So when he starts to vocalize like that, it means that he's not in a full-on hunt. It's not to say that he won't hunt. If something came across the road, then he could potentially start stalking. But generally, it's a situation where he's not looking to hunt at all. He's just doing a territorial patrol. Sorry, I must apologize. We're driving on a road that's got a very corrugated effect to it. So because it's a main road there's a lot of delivery trucks that drive on here and so they cause the road to get these little bumps and so when we're driving it causes the camera to bounce a little bit unfortunately so i'm trying to avoid them as best i can is that a bit better view there we go so it looks like he's going to potentially cross into juma let's have a look but you see there's that tree that's on the edge of the road so he's going to go up to it he's rubbing his face a little bit lifts the tail 
and sprays. Now, when we go past that, we are going to get the most incredible smell that's going to come. It's going to smell like that buttery popcorn that you get when you go to the movies, and it's really quite pleasant. You wouldn't think the urine of a cat would be very nice, but with leopards, it smells like buttery popcorn, and it's really quite something. And so you can often, when you're tracking them, know how fresh their scent or how fresh the tracks are when you come across a scent marking, and if you can still smell that popcorny smell, then you know it's been fairly recent.